Peter, uh, welcome. Uh, thank you very much for your time. It's a real pleasure to have you here. Uh, can we uh, start by, if you can just give us a bit of background about yourself. I was raised in New York City. Um, I have an undergraduate degree in ceramic engineering. Uh, my major was actually glass science. Most people don't think of glass as a uh, ceramic, but it's the largest ceramic industry in the world. I worked for one year as a quality control engineer in a plant making fiberglass insulation and fiberglass Corvette bodies. Then I went into the US Navy as an officer. I spent three and a half years in the Navy. I was on a guided missile destroyer for that time, first as damage control officer and then as communications officer. And during that time I did, uh, the ship was deployed to the Vietnam War twice. So I did two deployments um, in the combat zone off of North Vietnam. And then after the Navy, I went to Harvard Business School uh, to get my MBA and uh, really never went back to ceramics after that. So my career has been in consumer products, media and entertainment. I would mention, you know, a couple of themes. I think the first is branding. I've always been fascinated by brands. And another theme in my career has been searching for innovation. I've always been interested in, you know, in, in businesses, in people, um, in, in cultures that change the rules of the game. And so that's what we were looking for in our SPAC. And uh, we think that we found the perfect company in arrival in that regard. Yeah, so obviously you've been super successful and uh, had a wonderful career. Um, and then you, you uh, started a SPAC. And so uh, tell me, did you think you'd end up merging with an EV company? What were your uh, focuses as, as part of the SPAC? No, actually, uh, we didn't think about an EV company specifically. Our SPAC, as, as all good SPACs should do, was looking for a disruptive company. Again, a company that was going to do things differently in an industry. Most SPACs do not find a disruptive company because they're very rare. Um, so they do more what I call more normal deals. But we were very committed, uh, myself and my colleagues, to finding a company that was disruptive. And in fact, uh, you know, we found a company that is a step beyond that, as I said, changing the rules of the game. What was it about Arrival that made you on your side, think that we were the ones that you wanted to join with? Well, again, I think uh, uh, the first thing that hit me personally was the culture of the leadership team, uh, including yourself, Avinash. Um, this was a, the, the history of Arrival is that people got together now six years ago to uh, look at the industry um, led by Dennis uh, and uh, look at it completely differently. Uh, and de decide to compete, but on a completely different level. And so uh, the leadership team, including yourself at, for part of that time, was basically free to do nothing but work on innovation. And uh, I think the results are obvious. And uh, of course, right now with the SPAC process, the curtain is coming up, if you will, on arrival. What is it about the arrival uh, proposition that makes it unique? And, um, and how do you think it's also similar to Marvel or what you did at Marvel? I think, uh, again, it's, it always starts with culture. This culture is, as I said before, refusing to follow the nonsensical approaches uh, to, that are going on in the industry. Uh, let, me re let me relate to Marvel in that regard. Uh, because when I came to Marvel, as CEO, I never made a movie. I didn't know how to make a movie. I didn't know how to publish comic books. I didn't know any of that. And of course, looking back, that was a huge advantage because I was able, along with a great board um, and some outstandingly uh, other leadership in the company, to look at those industries and say, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. And I'll tell one story uh, uh, as an example in that regard. So when we first started making films, and actually the first film we, that we put out after coming out of bankruptcy, by the way, uh, was, was um, X-Men 1. And um, 
we had uh, 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 the the Hollywood community, of course, because we didn't have our own studio at that point. So we're working with the big studios and they all wanted us to hire very big, very expensive talent, big names to play the characters. And um, we didn't we, we looked at that and we couldn't imagine why you would spend this money up front <clears throat> driving the budgets up for a film. Um, you know, when the characters were the heroes and the actors and actresses would be behind masks most of the movie. So why would we do that? And I had lots of Hollywood agents very angry with me because I wouldn't hire, you know, their key people. So let me give you one example. We ended up hiring great actors and actresses, many of whom were literally not known around the world at all. I think the most uh, interesting one of all of those people was Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman was a song and dance man in Australia. When we cast him as Wolverine, Wolverine, there are 300 X-Men. Wolverine is the most popular of all the X-Men. Okay. Hugh Jackman is Wolverine in my mind. He has, he, he, he was the perfect casting. He has done a fabulous job. Of course, he's had a fabulous career subsequently, both in film, but also on Broadway with two big hits in musicals, right. showing his total talent. Oh, and by the way, he's a great guy. There were many examples like you, but we just wouldn't play the game the way the Hollywood, if you will, industry, the infrastructure uh, wanted us to play it. And, the re and there are many other examples, but the rest is history with Marvel. You know, we, Marvel is, is now, as you know, a global entity and um, changed the rules of the game forever. Oh, and by the way, I should say that one of the other great things about Arrival is that this is what we call in the investment world an ESG company. ESG stands for environmental, social, and governance. And we are moving the world ahead, not just making money along the way, but we're improving, if you will, the existence for people all around the planet through the EV movement, through the green movement, so to speak, in automobiles and, and, and commercial vehicles. What do you really expect for the future of Arrival? And, and on a personal note, what, what excites you the most about you know, things we're doing and, what, and the impact we could bring? Well, for me, you know, I'm, I'm in my position, I'm always looking more at the macro kinds of issues rather than micro issues. Um, and I, first of all, I think that Arrival is actually way ahead of the competition on, on virtually every level. And what's fun is to look forward and see that that, that that edge, if you will, it's more than an edge, that lead, that big lead is going to continue. It, it isn't just today. There, uh, I think the culture will spur you know, innovation almost on a daily basis going into the, into the future. And uh, the company can expand into lots of other vehicles over time. Um, I think it's very difficult for anyone, even the big OEM companies, to catch up. And so I'm very excited about that. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing, um, you know, vehicles with uh, the arrival name on them all around the world, uh, whether it's buses or vans or other vehicles, because I think the brand will stand for something very mighty and very exciting and absolute tops in class and I love to be associated as we all do with tops in class. And so you'll be, uh, you'll be joining our board uh, as the chairman. Uh, so tell me about your, your aims in the role. I have been chairman of other companies before, so I I'm benefit by seeing what can work and what doesn't always work. Um, I'm pretty demanding of board members, to be honest. We're looking for people whose personal Value system matches the culture of arrival, first of all. Um, I think that we, uh, we want a very active board. Um, and I don't mean getting in the way of management. I mean being, being a positive uh, reinforcement, if you will, to, to management, to leadership. Um, I'm very, very committed to diversity on the board. Um, I 
this is not because it's in right now to have diverse boards or anything else. I've believed for a long time in diversity that an organization is much stronger for that. I grew up in New York City, which is a melting pot of diversity. I've seen the power of diversity, of diverse thinking, of diverse backgrounds, of diverse opinions. We better have some diverse opinions. If we don't, we're not doing our job. The other, I think, big requirement for our board members is that they have to have been in a senior position in a company or companies that experience very rapid growth, very rapid change. That's what arrival is going to be, even now, is all about. Rapid growth, rapid change on a global scale, I might add. Okay, So we need people that know how to do that, understand the challenges of that. They may have been in different industries. That's okay. That's part of the diversity. But we, we absolutely want people who are comfortable on the board with rapid change and being very involved and having to be very involved to keep up, if you will, with a great leadership team. It's, it's, a, it's a new frontier when, you know, Arrival is essentially, it's a tech company. It's not anything really similar to the traditional OEM approach or uh, many of the other folks who are taking on this challenge. And so aside from, from the strong board that we've discussed, what else do you think it takes? Because we've got such a bold proposition. Um, what are the risks and challenges and how do you uh, see that you'll, you can help navigate through these, obviously with your immense experience and uh, connections, et cetera? Well, one of the things that I think makes our SPAC different from almost all of the SPACs was that we are not in this just to go through the process and take whatever money we make and run. We're in this for the long haul. We are very excited about the long-term proposition. It's, in a way, our honor to be associated with a company like Arrival. And uh, we, we certainly want to see it grow and be part of that. We've uh, already started even to help on certain areas already. We're, we're helping uh, uh, source uh, uh, some management, uh, leadership positions. Uh, of course, we're building the board right now. And uh, we've made some connections with potential customers for the company as well. Um, well, that's how we expect to help. And there'll be other ways as we go down the road. And, you know, it'll be not just CIIG, our, our SPAC helping out, but it'll also be the board, you know, in general. You know, we have uh, 1,600 employees all around the world um, working tirelessly to really uh, bring everything that we've spoken about to market over the next 12 to, to 18 months. Uh, we are looking to close, obviously, uh, sometime uh, late this quarter. Um, I just want to end on a message to, uh, you know, from you to the rest of the arrival team, either a story, anecdote, or just uh, any, anything you want, really, to everybody else. I think uh, it is very rare opportunity for anyone in this world, anywhere, you know, on the globe, to work with, uh, and it's not even work. I wouldn't describe it as work because it should be a pleasure. Uh, and, and I think that all 1,600 uh, employees right now of Arrival should be very proud they're associated with this company. This company is, is just, a, a, I think, a wonderful place to, to work. And I know that uh, actually Arrival has already been touted uh, in that regard publicly for being the best startup to work in in the UK. Um, so I'm, I was not surprised to hear that at all. This is a company that's really going to go places. Thank you very much, Peter. And I think on that, um, really appreciate your time. I'm really looking forward to the journey together. So uh, thanks. Well, my pleasure. Thanks very much, Avinash. Mm -hmm.